Okay, at this point I've shown you how to download the Citrix receiver, how to download data, and then how to access the virtual lab. So um, if you're having any problems with in any of those three areas, I highly recommend you talk to your instructor or your course TA before moving on because everything from this point forward sort of assumes that you've already got that much under control. Um, and if you do have that much under control, congratulations, that's far and away the hardest part. Um, usually it's the technical difficulties that get students. So if you've made it this far, um, bravo, you should have no problem with the rest of the lab section. Uh, so this video, I'm going to try to keep it under about 10 minutes. I'm just going to give you uh, a quick tour of SPSS, uh, some of the features, sort of how to figure out what these numbers mean, etc. Um, so you can see here at the bottom, we're at our data view screen, which is essentially just a spreadsheet like you would see in Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can see we have our variables across the top here. This is the Ad Health Lab data set, by the way. Um, so we have the gender of the respondent, the race of the respondent, and if you mouse over these, you can get a little bit, a little description of what each one means. Um, respondent's health, has the respondent ever had sex, which you know, given that this is an adolescent data set is kind of an interesting question. Um, respondent's religion, age, uh, and then some of their grades in school, etc. Uh, so this is just your standard spreadsheet. Now if you want to actually figure out what all of these numbers mean, because I mean, one isn't a gender, one isn't a race, these numbers in and of themselves don't make a whole lot of sense. So to figure out exactly what's going on here, uh, it's nice to be able to go to the variable view here at the bottom. <clears throat> you can see it's still a spreadsheet, but the rows and columns have changed. Now we have the variables here along the left side, and then we have information about each one of these variables uh, throughout the rows. So you can see the name of the variable, gender, all caps, no spaces, that's um, sort of a holdover from back um, from earlier data analysis programs. Um, decimals, we don't need any decimals in this data set because all of our numbers are whole numbers. Um, then we have labels, so the label essentially tells you what each one of these variables refers to, so like, oh sorry, um, gender is pretty self-explanatory, marry by 25, probably not so much, um, so if you click on this you can see uh, it's the, the respondent's answer to the question, do you think you'll be married by age 25? Um, dead by 21, do you think you'll be dead by age 21? Um, so again, kind of interesting questions. Um, another really important feature of the variable view is this values column right here. This is what's going to tell you what all of the numbers in the data view mean. So if you click on, sorry, if you click on the values uh, column, you can see it gives you this little blue box with the three dots in it. Click on that and this is what's going to tell you what the numbers mean. So you can see 1 is, uh, designates males and 2 designates females. Um, so if we were to go back to the data view, now we actually know what these means. We know, we know what these mean, excuse me. Um, respondents 1 and 2 are both men, respondents 3 and 4 are both women, etc. Um, so now let's figure out what race means. So if you look here, there's our race variable, our label respondents race, Click on that, it looks like we have 1 is equal to whites, 2 denotes African Americans, 3 denotes Native Americans, 4 is representative of Asians of Pacific Islanders, and 5 are our others. So again, we can look at our data view, and suddenly these numbers have meaning for us. It looks like a lot of these people are white, uh, respondent number 2 is an African American, uh, respondent number 7 looks like they're Asian or Pacific Islander, etc., etc., etc. Um, okay, so that's the main difference between the data view and the variable view. Um, another nice aspect of the variable view is that it tells you the level of measurement of each variable. Um, if you haven't had that lecture yet, this won't make sense to you quite yet, but um, you can see here different types of variables. Um, different levels of measurement. So this is actually really helpful when you sit down and try to do some analyses. Um, you can, um, you know, if you're doing a chi-square test, for example, you only want to use nominal or ordinal variables. If you're using um, 
I don't know, bivariate regression, for example, you'd want to restrict your analyses to um, interval ratio level variables, or as SPSS refers to them, scale variables. But we'll leave that alone for now. Um, now I'll just give you a quick tour of some of the options that you have here at the top. So our edit tab, um, actually let's start with file. There's a little bit of a lag with the server sometimes, excuse me. Um, so this is going to look like the file tab for a lot of programs. You can save your work, you can save it as, you can export like we saw um, in the last video. Um, the edit tab is again very similar to the edit tabs you would find in other programs. Um, it has an undo button and a redo button which is actually a major selling point for SPSS. Um, not all data analysis programs have the ability to undo mistakes that you've made which is um, can be kind of awful sometimes. Um, view, you can look at what toolbars are being shown, menu options, etc. Um, the data data tab is where you would do a lot of the sort of um, advanced data analyses um, or data management. You probably won't spend a whole lot of time with the data tab. The transform tab, if ever you wanted to recode your variables, say if you wanted to make it so that um, one meant female and two meant male, or switch males to zeros and females to ones, um, you would be able to do that in this under this menu. Uh, the vast majority of the analyses that you'll be doing this semester you'll find under this analyze tab. This is like the meat and potatoes data analysis. You'll be doing a lot with descriptive statistics, uh, you'll be doing a lot with comparing means, and then towards the end of the semester we'll get all the way down here to regression. So if ever you're feeling lost and you're not really sure exactly how to do an assignment from the lab manual, um, the analyze menu is always a good place to start looking. Now really the only other tab you need to worry about is this graphs tab. Um, and you can ignore most of these options here. Pretty much all the graphs that you need to make for this course can be found under legacy dialogues. I mean, if you really were feeling uh, motivated, you could build everything from scratch via the chart builder. Uh, the legacy dialogues actually have a lot of the programming already done, so it's probably the easiest option. Um, so you have your bar charts, your pie charts, your box plots, your histograms, etc. Um, should you ever want to manage your windows if you have multiple data sets open at the same time um, and you want to just switch between windows uh, you can do that here as well um, just as a little aside regardless of so this is my data window um, and somewhere around here is also my output window anytime you open anything on SPSS you'll also get an output window um, you can see here that the toolbar along the top, the menu options, are the same regardless of which, um, for the most part, regardless of which you have open. So a lot of people, you know, they'll run some kind of analysis and the results will show up in their output window and they feel the need to click back to their data window before they do any further analyses. That's not really necessary. You can do everything uh, from this window that you could on that window, um, which is kind of nice, I suppose. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video, just some of the nuts and bolts. Uh, the next video I'll show you how to actually um, start doing some analyses.